let's move on to the next section in this section we will look at input output process primarily the input and output so what is input what is output what is the process here so in this diagram you see a set of input devices which send input to the computer and specifically to the C program that we have written so typically keyboard mouse microphone are some examples of input devices and output devices are monitors printers speakers these are typical output devices and in between right what gets stored is the hard drive or the storage it could be a hard drive it could be a ram right so this is the standard computer process so in our c program in this particular case the processing is done right by the actual program for the processing to happen an input has to be read from the keyboard and the output has to be displayed in the monitor let's take a calculator program for example we are writing a program which will simulate a calculator so we will be clicking values on the screen right so for example if we take a typical calculator so let's look at the simple calculator application where it does a calculation of 7 plus 3 equal to 10. So if we have to write a C program which does the simulation from the keyboard we select a 7 which gets stored in a variable in this memory right it will be storing in a RAM. So we are typing 3 which again gets stored in the RAM in a variable. Right, so these two variables, now we type both these variables to the program and it was typed in the keyboard, it follows this process and then it gets stored within the storage in the RAM. Now the process happens within the program, so there is some processing which happens and finally you get the output as 10 which gets displayed in the monitor. So this is the example. Very similarly, any other program that you write on the computer mimics the same process. So it takes inputs, it does the processing using algorithms. In between, it might store data within the hard drive or RAM. And then after the processing is done, it sends the output to the monitor or printer or speaker. Right? So this is how any computer program works. Now, we earlier in the chapter, we saw how a variable is used to store data in the RAM. Any input which is given, how is it getting stored? We saw that part in the variables chapter. Now we will look at how we will get the input. We have also already seen how the output gets printed out. So we use the printf command, which is used to print things on the monitor, right? We have already seen that. Now we will look at input. In one of the programs earlier, we already saw a way to get the input. How do we get the input from the keyboard and store it in a variable? Now that's what will be the focus of this chapter. So let's look at the C program. So we have an integer variable i which is not initialized. So it has a garbage value. Now scanf percentage d comma ampersand i. If you look at this command, what it does is scanf actually reads the input from the keyboard and here it says what is the type of variable which we are trying to read percentage d says that it is an integer and if you look at it it is storing an i why is there an ampersand symbol here it's very critical to remember this ampersand most of the beginners forget this ampersand right because of which the program will not work the ampersand says that it has to be stored in an address so whenever you want to write anything to an address you have to use the ampersand so when you are reading something from an address, you need not have this ampersand, right? So scanf percentage d ampersand i, so it has to go and store it in an address. It's going to write into that address. Now printf percentage d comma i, it goes back, it fetches the value from the address and it prints here. Now it is just reading the value. That's why printf does not need the ampersand and scanf needs the ampersand. So let's run this program quickly to see what is the output. So when you run this program, it actually is waiting in the screen for your input. So I'll type a number. It will just reply back with the same thing. So 33 gets printed. So this is how the program works. Now this program, when you run it, um, it is pretty clear. It was waiting for the input. So to give that, we have to give it a printf 
enter a number. So now once we give this and run this again, the program will wait there saying enter a number. So it's pretty clear that now it is running and waiting for the number. And when you type the number, it gets displayed here. So this is a simple program as to how to receive an input from the user. Very similar to integer, we can do it for float as well. All we have to do is a simple change float percentage f here and a percentage f and you run the program. So it now works for a float enter number 3.33 and it gets displayed. Very similarly for a character char i printf scanf percentage c ampersand i printf percentage c just so that the user is aware let's type here saying that a character and now let's run this program so you will see that enter a character would come and we can type a character so i'll type c here enter and it displays c so this is how input output is done in c you read a value and you display a value so using scanf you can also read more than one variable let's actually do this int a float c right and uh, let's mention here enter a character integer and decimal number right let's have this program now now when you look at it here you have to say that okay it is percentage c first which is for the character percentage d for the integer percentage f for the float you have to give them separated by commas percentage i percentage a percentage c and now um, you have to display the values percentage c percentage d percentage i i a c right now let's run this program so it says enter a character integer and decimal number so i'll give a character c integer is 3 a decimal number is 3.3 .3, and then press the enter all the values gets displayed here so this is how you can read more than one value here using this you're just separating them by spaces and then giving the address of each of these where it has to go and write again when you do a printf it is reading so you don't have to give the ampersand it's going to read from the address and display it back here. Now, when you look at it, this is scanf, but many programs we read simple characters, right? So for reading a character, typically we do this uh, scanf percentage C ampersand C, right? So this is pretty cumbersome to type the entire thing, given that we read a lot of characters in program. So there is something called get care as a command and the put care, right? So there is some option like this. So here what happens is it waits for the input. So I'm typing E, it displays the E. So instead of doing a cumbersome scan of percentage C, whenever you want to read a character, you can type get care and then open bracket, close bracket. The value gets assigned to see whatever you type and then you can do a put care C, right? This is how you can read a character and write a character to the screen. So in quick summary, this is how scan of works. Uh, you have a keyboard input coming in and this is the scan of command which actually uh, has a percentage D or a percentage C and the value gets written into the memory so the address is given here. So we have already seen the printf at length with all the format specifiers. So now let's move on to the next chapter.